Greetings. Welcome to Eye to Eye Communications. I'm going to get right into it. I just recently did a video. Normally I wait, try to wait a couple of weeks before I put out another video. But the information I came across, um, the studies that I did after I did the recent video about a week ago, it was too important to put off. And, um, you know, I want to say that it's extremely difficult uh, for some of us. I'm going to say for myself to be wrong. I don't like to be wrong. And uh, I don't deal with pride. I thank God I don't deal with pride and arrogance, stuff like that, um, um, like I used to. Um, with that being said, uh, it, it's still difficult to be passionate about something, uh, convinced about something, you know, and to be wrong about that very same thing. And to admit it, and uh, it's pertaining to uh, the old law. Um, I spoke on uh, specifics about the old law being done away with, and that only being the animal sacrifices that atone for sins. But I got some scriptures, a book that slipped by me that I wasn't that familiar with, and I just got you know more familiar with it recently. I don't even really know how to pronounce it correctly, but I think it's pronounced uh, Colossians or Colossians, one or the other. But uh, and it's the first book of I'm gonna say Colossians because that's that's how it sounds. This is how I pronounce it, but it's spelled C O L O S S I A N S. And uh, for those of you, um, I, I sip wine because <clears throat> God of Heaven. Um, in the flesh, known as Christ, sip wine. He liked wine, so I like wine. Yeah. And um, so I'm going to get right into it. Um, a lot of us Hebrews, a lot of brothers out there and sisters out there that call themselves uh, Israelites and things of that nature, um, a lot of times we get compared to Christians because uh, we tend to our ethnicity and their religion, we tend to stick to the Bible more so than anyone else. Even though even in the Quran, you open up the Quran, you're going to see the first five books of the Bible. But, you know, um, Ishmael and a lot of those Arabs, they learned from Hebrews. That's that's how that came about um, and took on, you know, a lot of our teachings and things of that nature. So. But that's that's a lot of unknown history as well. So. I'm going to read right now Colossians. <laughs> sounds strange. Uh, the first book, and I'm going to start at the 19th verse. And this is this is dealing with Christ, um, and uh, this is basically Paul um, speaking about God and the, the reason why he sent Christ and and things of that nature. And uh, I will make a comment that us Hebrews, practicing Hebrews, um, we had the uh, right teachings. You know, we have more historical and we have more historical facts than our Christian brothers and sisters do. Um, but we're going about it the wrong way, you know, and I'll prove that. Uh, we've been spending much too much time talking about our brother Moses and Abraham and Isaac, you know, and Israel, also known as Jacob. And not enough time talking about God himself, the Christ. And uh, that's wrong for us to do that. Um, God said, put no other God before him. No other God. That that means Moses as well. That means Abraham as well and anyone else. You know, it's fine to talk about Moses and everybody else up until the time Christ comes. When Christ comes, it's all about him. That's really an essence of what him being the fulfillment of the law means. It all stops with him. Anything else you need to know, from that point on, you look to Christ. You see what I'm saying? You can mention all these other brothers of ours, all the family members. You can talk about them. You can teach about them. That's not a problem. But you shouldn't be teaching about and talking about them more so 
than you are about Christ. You see what I'm saying? That's the that's the mistake we've been making. That's the mistake a lot of so-called Israelites are making. Or I shouldn't say so-called Israelites. Um, I didn't mean that. They are Israelites. <laughs> but um, our brothers and sisters, we need to change the way we think. You know, so I'm going to break it down. Well, I'm not going to break it down. I'm going to read the scriptures of God. And uh, hopefully you can break it down for yourself. And uh, like I say, I'm going to start with Colossians 1, 19. Talking about Christ. Yeshua. Or Yehoshua. I don't know how to pronounce his name either. And I hate that. You know, it's our God. These are our people. And because of enslavement. You know, we don't know the proper pronunciations, perhaps, you know, and we certainly don't speak the language. And it's, it is frustrating, but, you know, life goes on. We got to find a way no matter what. 19. For it pleased the Father that in him should all... Uh, I'm sorry. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Fullness. Like I said, he's Christ being the fulfillment of the law. And it says, and having made peace... Through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you, that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If ye continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature, which is under heaven, that whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. So. I'm going to keep on. It says, so who now rejoice in my sufferings? I'm at 24 now who now rejoice in my sufferings for you. And fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of his mystery among the Gentiles? That's hope for the Gentiles as well. That's that's the good some of the good news I came to bring today as well. Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ. Yeshua, Yehoshai, the Christ. One to whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working which worketh in me mightily. Okay. So now we on, we on chapter, we on uh, the second chapter now. All right. Now this is, he says, um, for I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea. How do you pronounce that? And for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joining and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ, the Horshai, the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein, therein, with thanksgiving, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Did you catch that? For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Keep, that's the, that's, it says it again, fullness, fullness, completion, okay? 
and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Why are we still talking about Moses and Abraham and Isaac and Israel? That's cool to talk about them, but like I just said, we should not be talking about anybody more than we're talking about God, the Christ. He said he's a jealous God. Remember that too. That's not just with foreigners or Gentiles. As that pertains to anything and anybody. All right. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Now this part right here, this is it's got me sweating because it's like, it's deep. You know, this is the part where I'm telling you that there are other things that we no longer pertaining to the old law that we have to follow. I couldn't believe it, but it's here. And, and like I say, I, I accept the entire word of God. I can't pick and choose, you know, what I agree with, what I disagree with. Our job as servants and as sons and daughters of God, um, slaves of God, our job is to obey him. We don't have to always understand him. We don't have to always agree with him. Support him. You know, kind of like what he do for us all of our lives, whether we sin it or not, how he helps us and have patience. Yeah, to try to try to repay some of that back to, to the creator, if you can. You know what I'm saying? Just, just, just a little bit. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Now catch this part right here. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. You know what that means? In my opinion, I believe that God loves us so much and he cares for us so much that he made some alterations, okay, to help us. You know, he, he, he made things easier for us to, to come to heaven. You know, that's what that means. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. So that means this is the first Saturday in like what about seven, eight years that I will not be, um, you know, abiding by or, 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 you know, I would not be participating in, you know, um, it's difficult, you know, but like I said, who am I to question God? He made the Sabbath and it says in this word also written somewhere, I can't uh, quote the scriptures, but it says that God made the Sabbath for man, not man for the Sabbath. You see what I'm saying? So if God made the Sabbath and he choose to do away with it, who are we? to you know to question him especially when he's doing it because so many of us have died because of it you know a sin because of it you know i mean there's a lot of sins that you know a lot of situations a lot of things that he won't change and he didn't change you know but you just heard me read it I, you you see the book colossians second chapter the 16th verse I'll read it again. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come. But the body is of Christ. See, now I'm going to go to. If you will. More like it's kind of like a, a precept. 
You go to Romans, because that's where it started for me. Um, and this is gonna, this is gonna deal with the um, the um, commandments that he, he basically it was it was ten, and that's not including all the instructions because we it's not just about the commandments. It's about everything that God says. You know, we're, we're supposed to obey him in everything. Take his instructions, his warnings, all of that, right? But um, what he did was there was 10 commandments and he made it six. Okay, so I'm going to read it. Go to Romans 12th chapter and the ninth verse. Okay, and this is him breaking down what matters now. Not in Moses' day when he gave the Ten Commandments. This is Christ. We're talking about Christ from now on. This is what he says. These are current uh, commandments, okay? So like I say, Romans 12th chapter. Is that the 12th? You know what? No, I'm sorry about that. The 13th chapter. Romans 13th chapter, 9th verse. For this. Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's six commandments. And, and, and within those six, if you have wisdom, you'll see that the four, the other, the additional four is included in that. And I can break it down for you right here. This is the... The Ten Commandments right here, the original, I mean, they excluded some things. Uh, they didn't do the, you know, the, some continuations of the elaborate versions of it. But this is the, the gist, the gist of it. So the first, the first commandment, right? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay. The fact that we obey God and we serve him and that we will, even to say, for instance, if he only made it two commandments, right? Say he broke it down to two and we obey that. We're still we're still obeying God. That means we're putting him first. You know, we, we're we, we're still he's our God. You see what I'm saying? He's number one. That's how it's supposed to be, at least. So that even though he only mentioned these six that I just read, that first commandment is still in effect. You're still following that it says thou shalt not make any make unto thee any graven image. And that's where it stops on this chart. But the continuation of that. Commandment is uh, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, uh, anything that's on the earth, underneath the earth, and I believe also in the water, and um, bow down to it and worship it. So it's more so about the worshiping of graven images than it is of making graven graven images themselves. You have to keep every keep the word of God in this context, um, and 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 pay attention to the content. So that's that's the second one. The third one is thou shalt not take. The name, the name of the Lord thy God in vain. I mean, you would have to be a fool to want to do something like that anyway. And if you obey God, that means you fear him and you love him like his words say. And if you are following him, you're wise enough to know that he's real and powerful. And you're certainly not going to be dumb enough to put his, use his name in vain. So, and the fourth day, like I say, uh, I'm the fourth day, <laughs> the fourth commandment is remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, like I say, his reasons, I don't have to agree or understand. He done away with the Sabbath, so he the Sabbath is done away with. Simple as that. The fifth one, honor thy father and thy mother. Well, he just spoke on love. Matter of fact, I'm going to go to the 10th. Go to, uh, we still have Romans 13, the 10th verse, what it says. Love, remember what, we, what the sixth commandment was, right? And, and nine. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Okay? And remember before that, what did he say? He say, right, any other commandment? Okay, it's comprehending this and namely. So he's talking about the love of the neighbor. So what's so important about love, right? What's so important about love? P, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. How is love the fulfilling of the law? Well, if you love God, you'll keep his commandments. It goes hand in hand, baby. Okay, so, and it also says, and that knowing the time 
that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than we believed. Church, believe that. And uh, like I said, in the, in the fifth commandment, honor thy father and thy mother. So you're going to you're going to respect if you're respecting your neighbor. You understand that. And you're full of love. How can you not respect your mother and your father? That just doesn't make any sense. So, I mean, that's that's it in a nutshell. You know, that's that's um, breaking it down. And I think I want to read something else. Oh, um, hold on. Yeah, I got to read this. Peep this. This this is deep. Okay, so I'm gonna go to Romans 14 now, 14th chapter, and we're gonna start at the 10th verse. Right? It says, but why thus thou judge thy brother, or why thus thou set a not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. That again is a reflection of love. So stop pointing the fingers, looking for somebody to judge and make yourself feel better, saying this person is a sin sinner, this person is doing this wrong. Instead, focus on making sure you don't do nothing to harm your brother or your sister. Try that. So that's what the deal is. We keeping it real over here, man. You know, and it's all about God. So, and I'm sharing this in love. Man, y'all got to get into this word, man. And that's something that I just learned recently based on that little blunder that I spoke on last week or so, I would prefer to do more reading and studying than teaching. You did. So that way, I'd be doing less apologizing. You heard that? Now I got to find out where I put this at. So hopefully y'all learned some things. I know I did most recently. And uh, bless God, always, Son, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And with that being said, um, just keep that in mind, yo. Uh, our brothers and sisters out there, it, it's you know, it's beautiful to teach about our brothers and sisters in the scriptures, but don't do so more so than Christ. And what I want to do next, that what I'm gonna do is uh, compile all of the books of Christ and all his teachings so he can feel as relevant as he should. You understand that? He didn't come to die for us for nothing. He didn't come to die for us, you know, to be tortured to death, uh, to be ignored, you know, and to be to not be appreciated. You know, at least he's not going to get that from me. So I don't know how y'all live, you know, but uh, I feel like I owe him. You know what I mean? I mean, he gave me everything, you know, my soul, you know what I'm talking about? Everything that I know, everything I am. So uh, he deserves that. You know what I mean? So y'all keep it real out there, man. Toast to the God and uh, peace.